you're like, ah, what if I didn't start five years ago? So if you're watching this, you're like, should I start now? Yes. What in five years ago, this happens again? And you you would, it's full circle again. It yeah. would just come around and you'd be ready. What if, it, what if all this mania happens in three years? Like right. you need to start preparing yesterday. What's up, Tim Sykes here with Kyle Williams. How's it going, buddy? Good. The man, the myth, the legend. How's life? Uh, it's really good. Very good. Just, uh, I don't know, working on other things besides trading. We're still trading them itself. Um, Cause summer's been so, I wouldn't say slower, slow-ish compared to what we dealt in February, but it's still busy, but not as busy as- You just had a hundred thousand dollar trade. I did. Yeah. That's not slow. I know, I was saying, slow-ish, we're that, slow-ish because that one, we- Explain to the camera how, how making a hundred thousand dollars in a trade is in any way whatsoever slow. Because after that one trade, I've been break even for the last three weeks. So it was like push it when it was there, when it was hot. And now these next three weeks, it's like defense, hunger down, smaller size. And so it's slowish. It could be way slower. You know, don't, you know, we're like 100K trade was up here, super, super hot. Now we're kind of like here. We could be here. So that's what I kind of mean. We're, we're, more, more, more all right, time. All right, yeah, you yeah. dug yourself out of that. Yeah, yeah. You did better on that explanation than your MMNFF trade. Yeah, that was, yeah. That How was, much did you lose for everybody on MMNFFF when uh, you think that the dip buy is just oh, going to keep bouncing? Guessing. Uh, back in February, that trade, I lost about $90,000. Yeah. In like an hour. In like, yeah. Yeah. How did that feel? Uh, How did that feel right here? It uh, it stung a little. Damn, dude, you're doing some sit-ups. What, I worked what's out. going on? I, I lift weights. I was like, damn, that hurt my hand. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? Don't do that to me. There's gonna be a different result. <laughs> I'll puke up everything I had for lunch. That's not gonna be cool. <sighs> but no, it, it didn't. It stung. It stung that I broke so many rules. Not necessarily the money, because in terms of the money, like that week was still my best week ever. And you finished um, green on that day too, didn't you? No, I, I finished down 50K on that day. Okay, good. All so right, like so half you learned some lessons. Uh, yeah, I made, I made like half a loss back that day. Still finished up that week like 150K. Uh, so st like relative terms, there's just there was zero reason for me to feel sorry or like, oh, poor me. Because like it wasn't that at all. It was more so, it was more just upset and disappointed in the fact that I let myself break that many rules to even let that, that loss even take place. Let's just take this back for a second. Some people yeah. don't know who you are. What did you start with? When did you start? What are you up to overall? So in June 2016 is when I started. So I guess at, literally in- Five we're, years. We're filming Five this. Five year anniversary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember what day you started? Like the, like the last day. So the 29th. Maybe the 30th. So literally, this is your five-year anniversary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Happy anniversary, yeah. brother. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't even think about that till now. All right, so this is the five-year anniversary of Kyle Williams. He's here, literally flying out in a little bit. We just did an all-day webinar. Five years since he joined the challenge. Pretty freaking sweet. Um, he's over, what, $2.1 million now. Don't think that five years in, you're necessarily going to make $2 million too, but like, it's pretty cool. All right, so we got the whole team to surprise, but hard work pays off. That's surprising. You got the bun cakes, baby. You guys gotta sing. We're gonna sing. Come on in, guys. Happy anniversary to Kyle! Oh, Happy yeah. anniversary! <laughs> Since joining the challenge! Yeah. Happy anniversary, yeah. Kyle Williams! Yeah! Wow. Five years! Five years! Wow. Look at this! This is all you! Wow. <laughs> How did that just happen? What is this? The plants. The flowers. Because the only eats plants, the plants, the plants saved him. Saved him. That's right. It's a reciprocal relationship. That's actually amazing. I totally messed that up. Happy five year anniversary. Join the challenge June 2016. Uh, and then now five years later, I'm up one point. Uh, one or almost one or sorry, almost 2.2 .2 million. I was thinking two by one. I was like flipping it around, but yeah, almost 2.2. .2 you don't million. even know how yeah. much you're up. It's been growing so fast. Yeah. So you're at 2.1 million. What'd you start with? I started with $6,000. 6,000 to 2.1 million. Yeah. How do you answer all the people who say this is a scam? This is a fraud. This is not real. You're fake. 
Like this is all Photoshop. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's all an illusion. I I would I would say I was there. I started when I first found Tim. I was like, this can't be. It can't be like this. Like no one turns money into more money. What is this? <laughs> and you just you gotta you gotta have an open mind. You can't be. Some people are so like that that like there's there's no convincing. Correct. Them. It is like some they people are helpless. set. Yeah. And for me, I just watched enough videos and I read enough books and I saw enough things about not just you but just how trading worked in general. And I was like, this does and can. And work. You Did know? you get inspired by any one of the students back then? Because back then I think I had maybe two or three, three. millionaire students. Yeah, it was like Michael Good, Grittani. Michael Good, Gratani. Maybe Mark Crook, I think, by the time. Yeah, Mark was, was probably around there. Did yeah. any of their stories inspire you? Or it was definitely Gratani's, not so much in that his particular story, but that when I watched Train Tickers, it was super motivative because the way or motivating because the way he described any particular one trade, I was like. There's nothing, of course, he's impressive what he's done, but it's like, he's not, this isn't like, he's not a NASA rocket science scientist, right? This is something that I could do it. Yeah. Like, so that was super motivating. That was super encouraging of like, if he can do it, I could do it. Yeah. And so then you saw trading tickers, you saw him in the trading challenge chat room. Did you mm -hmm. see him make any big trades like live? Like, cause he used to like be in the chat room and be like, yeah, okay, like alert to, did you lot. see some of them? And I you're never, like, damn. I remember making him making some, no, I don't remember any particular trades, but just, yeah, Sam saying like P and L's for the day. I was like, wow, like bigger than my whole account, you know? And I felt like I knew my account was small, but when you just the levels of, of money and capital you can have. And just a trade, he was, was more than like my entire account. So was, FYI, Tim Grittani has turned 1500 now into over 13.5 million. Mm -hmm. He was inspirational to you. Do you now understand that you're inspirational to them? Uh, I forget that, but I do, it does, I have to remind myself of that, that like I'm in, I've stepped in those, not in Grittani's shoes, but in that realm of like, I'm, he doesn't even wear shoes. Into his sandals. Yeah, he's just right? sandals. You guys have similar, like, this is very similar. This is it's crazy. Just you need like a Snoopy wear. shirt? Do you just wear shirts too? Yeah, just t-shirts. I can't picture you I, in anything other than a I got, I got, I have to wear some nice collar shirts. And yeah? Some oh, so you got some collar shirts. So yeah, yeah. Bertani doesn't do collars. No, I'm not, so I'm not a little collar different. Okay, so you're a little different. Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. But we're here in Austin. We got a whole group of traders outside there. Did any of them come up to you and be like, yo, you're inspiring me with what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. They, they've, they've said they love our twist episodes with, with uh, Matt Monaco and Jack Kellogg. Yeah. They said they love breakouts and breakdowns. I think that's awesome that, yeah. that me and Jack are like taking a more deliberate approach to, to teaching and helping out that way. Yeah, um, in case yeah. you didn't know, Kim and Jack now have their own chat room, breakouts and breakdowns. You can join using the link below. Highly encourage you to get in there. It's amazing what they're doing. Also, watch Twist. You can click some links below. We're gonna have endless links. You gotta find, you know, inspirational traders, but then also I think it's good to take a little piece from every trader, yeah. right? Like oh, yeah. not to be exactly like any trader, but be like, okay, you do this, you, let me do this a little better. Like I watched Gritani's trading tickers. It gave me a little more patience. I'm not the most patient guy in case you didn't realize, but it helped me try to be a little more patient on the best setups. Cause frankly, that's how Gritani really succeeded, yeah. right? Yeah. Like he has insane yeah. amounts of patience. I remember in San Diego, we were actually filming I'm not sure if this was before or after we surprised you, um, but I watched trading tickers too. I, I, I watched like one or two trades with you after after oh, so after you surprised there. me. We went back to where you were staying. We watched like one chapter. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we went to San Diego to surprise him for a million dollars. We all dressed up like vegetables because he loves vegetables. You know, so we're we're corny like that. Whatever. It was funny. It was good vegetables. Did you finish all the vegetables with guacamole? Did. We finished them. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We got a lot of vegetables, a lot of guacamole. We'll show some pictures. Pascal dressed up like a strawberry. Do you have that picture? I have. Ins I insert that. So I'm wearing it now. Insert that picture, right? <laughs> if Pascal has a strawberry, you, wait. You said you wanted to show your daughter. Did she like that? She did. Did you come home with the strawberry I outfit? Did. She laughed. So you good. are father of the year. That's fantastic. <laughs> Anyways, we have fun with this. We were in San Diego. We watched Trading Tickers before we went to bed that night. Trading Tickers two. That night, I had such nightmares that I was like in a short squeeze and I couldn't get out. You know, West Coast time, it was like, I remember waking up, it was like one, two in the morning yeah. and I could not go back to sleep. I went downstairs, I'm like pacing around, I'm like, I'm not in the short squeeze, I'm not in the short squeeze. Like that was a nightmare for me. So be careful if you watch Trading Tickers or Trading Tickers Part 2. Um, lots of patience required for me, that's a nightmare.
Yeah. Did it give you nightmares or did you get inspired by trading tickers and trading the, tickers too? The the patience he has on some of his trades is just not my style. Uh, for the same reason of like, I remember specifically one trade in trading tickers one um, where he just let it go against him. And he admits it. Like he's op- like he's teaching you all of his vulnerabilities about like where he broke his rules and to throw his trades. And one trade, I remember he specifically was like narrating it like, this is me breaking my rules and I'm letting this trade go against me. And I remember having just massive anxiety because I'm like, you should be cutting it and he's not cutting it. And uh, you know, so that like, so I didn't have to learn from his patience, but I learned like, I do not want that anxiety, you know, of, of letting a lot. I wanted to like, cause you're watching, he has like live trade examples and I'm like yelling, I'm like, cut it, yeah. cut it, cut it. And he's not cutting it. Like it's already recorded and it's yeah, a good right. lesson of what not to do. Be very careful if you're a short seller, okay? The markets have changed quite a bit in the past year or so. Short selling is a very dangerous thing. Although your MMNFF, why do I have such trouble saying that? That's that was a, a long. It was a long. You're primarily a short seller. Yeah. So you went against who you were and you tried to dip by. And I just, I just was too you're aggressive. Like, I had too much like size. Emperor and I Emperor just... Palpatine trying to be good. You can't go against your nature. Right. right. You're evil. Accept it. Where's your black hood? Do we have a black hood that you can put on? We only got. Uh, I guess no. you don't even have. No. Do you have a black hood? Uh, I got picture. like a black jacket. When's like your a, birthday? Uh, February tenth. Okay, I'm gonna get you a black hood. Black hood. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be like a Grim Reaper outfit. It's gonna be right, sick, perfect. and you're gonna be like, do you like going long or short more now? Because I know primarily you were a short seller, but lately you've been going long a little bit. How does it feel? The, the Is there a tingling sensation? The most recent market with. Uh, the OTC specifically in January and February really made me feel good about how I developed my long game on the long side. Cause yeah, I was in the right place at the right time, but I really pushed it and I, and I pretty much grew my E-Trade account from 25,000 to about 500,000, but not in that time from between so about September to March. Okay. But most of it was from January and February that time. And for my, over my career up to that point, like it was like 80, 89% uh, short profits only like ten percent long. Yeah, and I fully, I think that period like half made it turned into half and half, like fifty percent long, fifty percent short. So in terms of like a flexibility point standpoint, I felt really really good that I can like really pull money out alongside. In terms of right now, I still I'm not good at listed longs. I'm only good at OTC longs, and OTCs have been again slower ish. Yeah. So there's just not as many long opportunities, but I am still making money. Long. Yeah. 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 But I like that you go back and forth because I'm always worried about people where they're like. They have one strategy, the market changes, they got nothing, right? Like yeah, yeah, traders yeah. should adapt. And it's okay to be better at one strategy and have like a weak spot. Like you don't have to be like master of all strategies and you just have to be realistic about it. I'm glad that you said you like going long OTCs, not listed stocks. Yeah. Same, I'm terrible at listed stocks. They're too choppy. I get faked out, I get stopped yeah. out. Um, I don't even use hard stops. I just have mental stop losses. I can't deal with that. OTCs, very, very beautiful when they Smooth. can go, you know, supernova like WSRC. Did you trade WSRC at all? I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I can't catch them all in the slower markets. I kind of, in the slower markets, I unfortunately not slower. In the more listed, when the listed market gets hot, specifically when AMC was going on. And, and so you're focused on AMC? Very focused. Fair on enough. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. AMC, I haven't even traded AMC or GME or BB or BBBY. Uh, I traded NAKD, which was like a wannabe little meme play. Yeah. And I sold that one too soon. I wasn't even good. I think I made like two cents or three cents a share. Then it went up like 30 cents a share. And I was just like, this ain't me. But WSRC went from four cents to nearly 40 cents and I took profits along the way. So yeah. you got to figure out what you're good at and what you're not good at. And don't feel bad if you're not good at something. You can always get better too. You know, I know a lot of people where like they are very good at going long, but then they find that they're a short seller and they make more from short selling. You got to learn, you know, who you are over time. What was your first strategy that that you tried? That brings me to the top. I was really just thinking that. So I first learned panic dip buying. So originally my very first setup was a long setup. Yeah. And then the very next setup I wanted, to, the the initial next thought was like buying breakouts. Like that should be the next because it's both are long and I have an E-Trade account at the time. Like it works perfectly. And it turned out I was like terrible at it. I just didn't have the patience. I realized I needed the patience more like Gertani had in some yeah. of his breakouts. I just didn't have them. Then I gravitated towards short selling. I learned the first red day. I learned to short some of these um, OTC like promotions. And then becoming a good short seller actually helped me become a better long trader. So now like being, you know, about two, three, four, five years in, now I can consider myself a breakout buyer, someone who can make money on breakouts because it's like I had to learn 
the opposite side of the good ins and outs of what how a short seller thinks and knowing like, okay, this is still a good lot because if I was a short seller, I'd be scared or I don't want to be in this. It's like the- Can you explain this more? Because I have a lot of early lessons where I was primarily a short seller and some people are like, oh, I don't want to watch any of that because I just want to go along. How does it help you to learn the opposite side? Because when we're dealing with the supernovas that we trade and if, and there's, there's many key inflection points in this seven step framework where if it's not going up, it's going down, right? It's, it's nothing, you know, yeah, there's always, a, you know, there's consolidation sideways action. It's never, you know, it never just like crazy insane like that. But when you're in such an emotional, uh, psychological state of something, you see these stocks move, it's like, what I shorted yet? No. Well, is it still strong? Yes. And it's like, it's very, it's a very, I, I got good along your from a very simplistic thing. Like would I want to, if I was a short seller, would I want to short it safely right here? I'd be like, no, I think it, 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 as it, in terms of the framework pattern, it can go much higher. So it's like, okay, it could be, a, yeah, the odds are naturally going to be in my favor at that moment in time to go long. And this is what I want everyone to do. Put yourself in the mindset of a short seller. Part of the reason why, I mean, I didn't know I was going to be all long biased now. I, like, I used to love short selling. I still kind of have like, you know, my tweets are still like that of a short seller. I'm like, there's so many frauds. Yeah, they yeah, expect yeah. the word. <laughs> Everyone's like, what are you talking about? You're a long bias. But I still think like a short seller. And if you think like a short seller, you start seeing like the frauds, the scams, like yeah. all the stuff that makes you want to bet against things. I'm not a short seller right now, not because I don't see scams, but because even the scams are spiking so high. I'm scared to bet against anything right now. But I still have that mindset and it's no different than, you know, I was a major, uh, I majored in philosophy and that made me think outside the box. All my friends were in business and finance. Yeah. I still minored in business and finance, but to me it was like a joke. It was like too easy. I was like, why am I paying for this in college? Philosophy, I sucked at. Everyone's a pothead. Like I don't have anything in common with these people, but it made me think outside the box. Now I'm more successful than all my friends who are in business and finance. Thinking outside the box really helps complete everything for you, right? It, yeah. it creates a circle. What did you major in in college? I was originally an engineering major uh, because I was really good at math. I enjoy math and my dad is an engineer as well. Sick of uh, Yeah, yeah. Weird. But uh, after, I pretty much knew within the first year of my college career that it wasn't what I wanted to do, but I didn't know what to change it to. But once I found trading, I switched to finance thinking that would benefit me. It, it didn't benefit me. Like, very, very little. It almost taught me, I, I tell this, I tell this, it almost taught me what not to do because I would have teachers that talk about like the traditional finance view, like worldview. And it's like, <laughs> I don't agree with any of that. Throw it yeah, all yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. What, do you so. talk to any of like your, your teachers or classmates and you're like, yeah, I made millions in penny stocks. And like, no, like, so well, the one funny situation was I had a, an invest, like the class was called investments. Yeah. And so they, we went over everything from options to mutual funds, just the whole like general foundation. Yeah, the of, whole spectrum. Yeah, yeah. And so one day, this particular lecturer, she was going over like technical analysis versus fundamental. Yeah. And her whole thesis was that like technical analysis doesn't work. <laughs> Meanwhile, this class was during market hours. Uh, and so I was trading, it was power during power hour. <laughs> and I had made $500 on like a technical breakout <laughs> as she was telling me technical or Did you raise did, your hand? I did. And I was, you're so, like, uh, she, miss? Uh, she, go, she goes like, does anyone use technical analysis? And I go, I raised my hand, she just picks me like, I do. She goes, do you think it works? I'm like, yeah, it works for me. Like. Today. You said you were trading in her class? I just, I kind of avoided it. Oh, I said, you I said, said today. You I said didn't today. like turn the laptop around and no, be like, I don't, want, I don't want to get in trouble. So I just said today. She goes, oh, okay, good for you. Like totally. And she's thinking like, crap. okay, you're going to win one out of 10 times. Yeah, yeah. And then you think it works. Yeah, yeah. She thought I was full of it. I don't think technical analysis on its own works all the time. But if you combine technical analysis with preparation, with fundamental analysis, I mean, there's a whole framework. This is, I mean, this is my penny stocking framework guide, right? Like yeah. I think that it's hugely underestimated um, and undervalued in the grand scheme of things. And like you have all these old world teachers, like literally someone said, I don't remember who it was. I don't know if you were there for this, but I had a student saying like they, this, the teacher took one of my DVDs and put it up on, on screen and said like, here's why this is wrong, 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 wrong. And I was like, damn, like what did I do? Yeah, here's an example. But people hate penny stocks, okay? People hate technical analysis, it's like voodoo, but there's nothing crazy about it. And the more times you start seeing like breakouts, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like yeah. meme stocks are the ultimate self-fulfilling prophecy mm -hmm. because you see it being talked about on Reddit. You see it being talked about in Discord. Everyone's got their Robinhood accounts. Everyone's got their stimulus check funded accounts and they buy it because they see other people talking about it. Other people buy it because they see the stock price going up. It's a whole circular self-fulfilling prophecy and there's nothing behind it. Yeah.
No, it only works if everyone believes it. But the problem is, or the, the why it works is I think it's like if there's a breakout level, that's a technical level, and I see the high is two dollars. Everyone's gonna want to know what the high is. No one's gonna think, oh, well, I care about one eighty seven more than two dollars because one eighty seven is just this rent. Like people love highs, they love lows. They love just where the cl- stock closed, where the stock Round opened. numbers too. Yeah, round right? numbers. So if a stock, I, I just said two. And I yeah, didn't, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So if a stock, let's say a stock has never broken a dollar ninety five, and then with a huge volume, it's mentioned on Reddit, it's mentioned in Discord, it's being hyped up as the next meme stock, and it breaks the one ninety five all time high, and it hits two, and it's at two hundred one, two hundred two. That's a huge breakout, a techni- technically important breakout, a psychologically important breakout, and everyone starts talking about it. And everyone's like, oh, two dollars a share. Then it goes from two to two ten or two twenty or two fifty, depending on the play. Yeah. And then that technical breakout is there. And you can buy it at two and sell it at two ten or two twenty mm-hmm. and make five, ten percent in a few minutes or hours. Like how crazy it, is it? Uh, it's still crazy to me, but is it crazy to you that like people are trying to make five or ten percent per year? Yeah. Like I know. Like if you make twenty percent per year, so if you have a five thousand dollar account and you make a thousand dollars, that's better than ninety nine point nine percent. Like that is like an that's, excellent consider an excellent return. That's child. That's like yeah. children's play for us. Yeah. I'm not saying we win every time. I'm not saying like you know to take it for granted. But I'm just thinking like. People have such the wrong mindset with like with a five thousand dollar account, and they're like, "Oh, let me put it in Amazon," and Amazon goes up ten percent over six months, and they're like, "I invest in blue chips." Yeah, and you're like, "I'm I feel scarred because I I have enough money now where I probably should diversify in different areas." And one of the first things that I thought of when I thought about this was like, "Okay, should I put some money like long term in like a long term investing kind of thing?" And I just I was like, and I, and I, and I rethought really about it. Like, oh, well, I can make 10% a year of that money. I'm just like, that's, that's lame. You do the math. <laughs> I get scarred. I'm like, it's just. What you bad. learn. And the reason, I mean, this, I, we sound cocky as, as yeah. AF right now, but what you learn is that you want to, you know, utilize the money in your account. You don't want it just sitting there. So whether you make zero or 10%, it's pretty much zero and that money is just wasted. So if you put it in a mutual fund, if you put it in Amazon, if you put it anywhere where it doesn't have the potential to grow exponentially, it's pretty much wasted money mm-hmm. in my view, right? Like yeah. I know a lot of people, there's a few students out here, like I said, some of them made 100,000, 500,000, one guy made 900,000. Were you here for that or yeah. you were sleeping? No, uh, I was there for yeah, Okay, yeah, yeah. and I was like, what are you doing? And they're like, just, they're trading with it. Yeah. So you have to think, can you use the money to grow your account more exponentially? Like mm-hmm. when I first made my million dollars, like I didn't buy a Lambo, I didn't spend it because that would have taken a huge chunk out of my account. Then yeah. I would have bet smaller and betting smaller takes out future earnings. Like that's when you have something that's very profitable more times than not, anything that you take out or anything where there's money you can't utilize, it hurts your future earnings. Yeah. Do you think like that? I, for the first probably two to three years, I did as much as I possibly could to leave my trading account untouched. Like I remember my 2018, I made like $30,000 2018. Um, and so I owed maybe a couple thousand dollars in, in taxes. I remember paying that money with my part-time job. I didn't even pull out to pay those taxes. I just, I just wanted to keep it sacred, like untouchable, grow it as fast as I could because I knew there was no other area where I could get a better return on my money if I had as much in money in that account as possible. But that's good. Yeah. You see Peter Thiel, uh, did you see the article? He turned a few this. thousand now into over five billion. Yeah. He took, Peter Thiel's like one of the best VC investors of all time Amazing. with like Facebook and PayPal. And he put all of those holdings into his IRA so that it's tax free. And he now has like five billion rumored um, Amazing. to be tax free, which is crazy. Incredible. So. You got to think like that. And I know that sounds crazy because like 90% of traders lose. Most people are like, oh, can I win anything? But once you start to find your strategy and once you hone in on, you know, what you want to do and if you have enough data, if you have enough evidence, like, okay, I can do this trade over and over again. I see this pattern. Then you're thinking about how do you maximize it? If you take a ton of money out to buy a nice car or buy a nice house or, or something, if you have a good strategy, you're taking money away from that good strategy. So if you take out, let's say, fifty thousand dollars from your account to live well and you know treat yourself, treat your family, fantastic. But that fifty thousand dollars, if you have a working strategy, that might take a hundred thousand or two hundred or five hundred thousand away from your future earnings. How much did you say you, your, your E Trade account turned into? Um, from I funded it just under. So I started with an E Trade account. But like I said, I when I started learning breakouts, it was terrible breakouts. So I just I kind of threw that E Trade account out, 
And I didn't have any trade account for probably in the other two or three years until it came a long time, or even four years, until August, about August or September 2020 came around. So not um, even a year. We're filming this in June 2021. Right. Okay. And so from 25000 up to 500000 within like the next four to five months, so six months. 25000 into 500000 Yeah. So think about that. If you took out that 25000 and you didn't have that E-Trade account, you might not have made that no. 475000 Right. So taking 25,000 out, understand this is like the craziest market in decades. This isn't gonna happen all the time, but yeah. this is a good example of how you can grow your account exponentially. Mm -hmm. If you took that $25,000 off, let's say you paid off your student loans, let's say you know you treated your mom to something, yeah. and you don't have that 25,000, you don't have that breakout account, you miss out on 475,000. In like yeah. six months yeah, or yeah. five months? It was like until whenever March ends, so September through March. What is yeah. it? Six, six months. Six months? Six yeah. months. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Think about that. Now that is best case scenario, hottest market with a very fully prepared trader. So don't yeah. think like you're gonna turn 25,000 into 500,000. Yeah, that for me, even for me, that was the fastest growing account I've ever had. It, in terms of all my short trading accounts or my short like selling accounts, none of them grew as fast as that. It was a great place, right time, very hot, hot market. Preparation meaning opportunity. Yeah. You were fully yeah, yeah. prepared, the opportunity was there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people had the opportunity, they weren't fully prepared. So give yourself props to that. I saw a video though somewhere, I don't remember if you remember, but it, I think it might've been a twist episode where after the market has slowed down now the past few months and you're like, I wonder if I could have pushed myself even more. Yeah. Do you remember saying that? I did. You I, are a cocky, cocky young man. I, it's You have so made roughly $2 million in about a year or so. Mm -hmm. After, before which you had never made what? What was your previous best year? Uh, 2020. Before 2020? 2019, I made 90K. 90, so you never even had a six figure year yeah. and now you have seven figures. Yeah. You're like, I could have pushed myself more. I could have pushed it more. You could not have pushed it anymore. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I say that only because now it's like, it's almost like a hindsight thing where because the market was hot as it was and now it's like after the fact, it's like, it's a full, like reflection and it's like now now i think about if that mar it's almost as if if i had that if that market came back again i'll push it even harder you know because like now safely, you, but, but now but, you have experience so this right, is another right. thing that i want to talk about when you make five figures six figures seven figures now you kind of have like the secret code how to make five six seven figures so the next time the opportunity comes about you're even more prepared using your past history your mm -hmm. experience now yeah. So, you know, this is why like Tim Gritani, he's basically taking the past few months off. Beautiful family, amazing. Um, you know, he's already made 13 million. But I think had he been around for the OTCs in January, oh, yeah. February, March, 30 million, 50 million, maybe 100 million. I don't know how much he could have pushed it. I remember, I remember thinking in my head, knowing me always seeing Gritani as someone who's always been more than me, who's always been pushing bigger size because he's just more experienced. He's been the game longer. I've always seen him as someone who just makes more um, or does better. And then I remember like maybe late February, like all of this madness is kind of playing out. And I remember either I talked to him or someone talked to him and then talked to me, but they were like, yeah, he's only made, not only, but like made a few hundred thousand. And I had made almost over a million at this point in these short few months. And I was like, like what? <laughs> like, no. like, he's only like, what? You know, I didn't understand. Like you have can't family. But kids this is the crazy yeah. thing where just because you've made a lot in the past doesn't mean that you're gonna keep going. Like you have to figure out like what you need. Like Tim Gratani, very low maintenance guy, 13 million. This is like enough to buy Snoopy shirts for like entire <laughs> villages. Like this is like his biggest expense. He doesn't spend money. So he's already made it trading for him the way that he does it patience wise, very stressful, right? So like, I mean, he had a baby basically. If you have a baby, you're already stressed. Like you can't do yeah. both, so you have to choose. But this is why I'm saying this. There's so much more upside and I'm excited for the next round because now you've yeah, learned how to make a million, two million. Next round, let's see if you can do the 10, 20, 50. It's only a matter of time. And you met, we went to Dubai, he met Harry Ye, who oh, is my man. former student, was terrible at trading stocks, moved on to crypto trading. Now he's made hundreds of millions. He's buying his second yacht. Did you see his second, second yacht? yacht. With, it's, it's got a incredible. pool. It's got a pool off the yacht. Yeah. Like, Come on, Harry, that's fantastic. We visited him in Dubai, he put us up at the Burj Al Arab, which, you know, Beautiful. to be fair, this is above my pay grade. The room was like 12 grand a night, he put us up for several nights. Like, 
It's only a matter of time if we have another hot penny stock market, whether it's you or Jack or Matt Monaco. Matt Monaco wasn't even up on stage on the last penny stocking conference. He came out of nowhere and he's closing in on two million. Yep. So don't think just because somebody has done so well in the past means that they're gonna be the best in the future. Anybody can come on up and the mm -hmm. question is, can you push yourself, right? Yeah. Mason yeah, yeah. supposedly has made like oh, 20 million. He's really pushed it, yeah. He's another one of my challenge students and he just goes big and he pushed it at the right time. So like, if you learn this strategy and you choose when you wanna push it, there's no pressure. In, in fact, you shouldn't push it in the beginning. But if yeah. you study enough, all, everyone who's done well has been in the challenge for three, four, five years. There's nobody who's like year one challenge and like they're pushing it because no. they just yeah. don't, know. don't know. They don't have the perspective. Like yeah. you have the perspective of 2019, 2018, 2017, mm -hmm. 2016. It took it took about year three in till I finally realized how to push it. It took me the first year just to be profitable. It then took me probably year two and year three just to learn how to be consistently profitable, taking gains, growing my account steadily. Then once it got to year three, four, and then five, this, this recent hot market we've seen, that's when I really grew into myself of learning what my best setups were, like what, what could I push, not, not the limits, but what could I really increase my size on and yeah. take bigger risks yeah. safely and come out with much, much bigger profits. And, and that was, that was and that's beautiful. Changer. This is why I say it's a marathon, not a sprint. Every year you focus on learning a little something. You can't learn everything. You can't like learn your pattern, optimize your pattern, push it all in like the same year. No, that's just no. too much. You need the, the good trades, the bad trades. You gotta learn everything in between. And then when the time is right, that's when you push it. So that's why I say to you, everyone watching this, start studying now, start your process now. So that year one, you can work on your issues. Year two, you work on your issues. Like you just summarized it very well by year three, year four. So mm -hmm. when I say preparation, meeting opportunity, you're not just a trader. You've had years testing out the little things so yeah. that then you were able to push it. Yeah. And Jack pushed it. Jack is over oh, 8 million. He, he killed it. Right? He killed it. Yeah. Yeah. And Jack was trading with uh, mono and strep throat right. at the same time. He pushed it so much, his health suffered. And now in 2021 or mid 2021, he's pulled back a little bit from trading. Uh, although, breaks. although he said, what, that he made 300 the other week? Yeah. Was yeah, 300,000 yeah. well, well, or 300 dollars? 300,000. Okay, that's yeah, what I thought. Yeah. No, actually almost, well almost, this is what I thought about when we talked about year three, year four, year five pushing it. There's also the experience of, of learning that in, that in or that um, more in detail, not just, not just pushing it, like you said, in terms of certain times of the year, because you can't push it all year long, but pushing it even in certain individual plays or individual weeks of months for like Jack's scenario and my scenario, the first week of this June, I think he made a million on AMC alone. Yeah, he made he a million really on AMC. It. I had my new best week of, I think, close to 250,000, I think 240,000. Okay. And then for, I think, believe for Jack and for me, these last three weeks of June, break even. Nothing. It just, we've just been, I haven't been on our game. A little, a little different, market has changed a little bit. Still some plays, but just the plays we know the best, which was AMC the first week. We pushed it, we really made sure we took advantage, and now we've just kind of staying safe, staying breaking. Do you remember when the madness was happening, when Huddy was trying to create like a snowboarding trip, and I was like, absolutely not yeah. during the madness. He still went, wasted 50 grand. What does he care, the dirty hippie? But <laughs> when that was happening, I made a video for, for some challenge students, and I was telling everybody in the challenge webinars, I was like, look, this reminds me of year 2000. I made over 700 grand the first four months of the year. Last eight months of the year, I lost 10 grand. Yeah, I remember and that. And people were like, what are you talking about? Like, that is what can happen in trading. You can really push it for a week, a month, four months, six months, one stock, two stocks, five stocks. But it's not like this get paid the same amount bi-weekly or bi-monthly that like people are used to like at a normal job. Yeah. Right? Far from it. So everyone watching this, if you're just starting, we're talking big numbers here. I know that's out of, like totally out of the question for most people. Don't think that this is gonna happen overnight. But when you're first starting, a lot of people say, oh my God, I'm, I'm studying like 10 hours a day. I'm making less than a Starbucks part-time barista, you know, but- I've been there. Weren't you? I've done that. You were- Not a barista, but I was I was a waiter for a restaurant. What was the restaurant? Uh, BJ's. Yeah, I knew that! Yeah. Um, Someone actually said that. Someone DM'd me. They were like, they worked at BJ's with you. 
and then oh, message me. Uh, it's probably, yeah, there's people who there's actually yeah, there's former coworkers that that have seen me see my success. Do you ever go back all, there? Are they still working there? Um, I went back there with my parents. Um, yeah, like a month ago, and there's people I recognize. You buy working. the whole restaurant, and everything? No, like, oh, no, Kyle's back in town. No, Kyle's <laughs> back in town. What is what's the specialty at BJ's? I don't even. Uh, know. They do pizzukis, like it's a pizza cookie. For dessert. Pazookies for everybody. <laughs> everybody yeah. Dude, you need to go there. <laughs> film that. Where is this? Is it in San Diego? This is in San Diego. Yeah. We need to go to San Diego. Go to BJ's. Pazookies for everybody. If you don't do what I'm doing, and I'm going back there with we, you. We, we go, I'll do it. Okay, good. We still have to actually show. Um, we donated $50,000 from my charity foundation in Kyle's honor to celebrate him passing a million to San Diego Food Bank. Kyle went there. Thank you, Cassidy, on the Carmigawa Foundation team. Uh, she helped facilitate. She actually used to volunteer at San Diego Food Bank, and now you know fifty thousand in your honor, which yeah, is pretty cool, it was awesome. it was right? Cool, so we'll go back to San Diego. I need to volunteer there to show how much great work San Diego Food Bank does. Yeah. Then we're going to BJ's and buying pazookis for everybody. All right, sounds good. How much is a pazookie? Uh, it's like five, six bucks. So we're gonna get like a hundred pazookis. That works. Is there enough people? How many people work at? How many people like? Are eat you at there? BJ's? Uh, they have. They have. They can have up to 100 tables or so. They so we need that. to go when it's crowded, like a Friday night, pazookies all around, yeah, the post-pandemic pazookies, PPP all around, we're celebrating. <laughs> um, no, that's cool. You got to have fun with it. But I want people to understand, like, you study a lot at first, the money is not there, okay? You might study every day for a week, a month, a year, and make zero. You might even lose, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. might be down 4,000, like, hey, how was your year? Well, I've been studying every day and I lost four grand. My first 12 month rolling period, I was down, I was down four grand. I lost four thousand dollars. I just yeah, that's crazy. Just up, yeah. How did you stick with it? Like, I can guarantee you that your friends and family are like, penny stocks are a scam, Tim Sykes is a scam, you're dedicating your life to losing four grand. What is this? Yeah. Um I it was like back to the scenario where I watched trade tickers with Katani and he was just like going through trade plans and then he was making money with those trades. That's what I thought. Like, if he can do it, I can do it. Like there's just something I'm not getting yet. But again, putting in enough time, putting those 10 hours a day, not making any money or even losing money, I knew would lead up to the ultimate learning curve and get over that hump to then to then make money. And Gritani made nothing his first nine months. Jack made nothing his first 20 months. You made nothing, what, your first how many months? I mean, I, I, I started being, I started pulling out green months after 12 months in, but in terms of being profitable overall, yeah, I, yeah like... 18 months. 18 months. Yeah, yeah. So that's the game, okay? Like, I don't want to sugarcoat it. I don't want you to think and understand, like, the market's different back then than compared to here. Like, some people are going to be like, well, I've been making money for six months. Yeah, it's, it's a different, a different market, market in 2021 versus 2016. Very different. Yeah. So it's not guaranteed that you're going to do 9, 12, 18 months with nothing. But be open to that. That's part of the learning process. And that's tough for people to hear. Go back and look through Tim Grittani's trades. Can you... Pascal, can you show some of Tim Grittani's early trades? Yeah, the one is like explosion. Yeah, where he's like implosion. trading implosion and he lost like $12, like his first trades. Um, that that happens, okay? It's not about how much money you make in the beginning. You'll probably lose in the beginning. So it's good to start small. Mariana had a great tweet. Um, we're going to include that tweet. Um, Timley slash small is good. I created a whole little Timley link for that. Yeah. Timley slash small is good. Mariana's tweet, my first female millionaire student. Um, she, I think she made like $38 on a morning panic dip buy on ENZC. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. eight months later, yeah, same. same pattern, same ticker, hotter market, more experience, and she made like 16 grand. It's same pattern, <laughs> okay? So this is, the, this is what trading is all about. You're gonna have promoters, you're gonna have doubters, you're gonna have family members saying like, oh, you're making so little money. Yeah. That's good, okay? I always respond to people who say that, like, you're a scam, you only make so little, you pay Tim Sykes more than you actually trade. It's the process. And I say trust the process. Kyle is a byproduct of the process. My own trading, Tim Grittani, we're all byproducts of the process. I got started back in 99, so I'm a little different, so I got lucky where I made like 100 grand my first year. That's not gonna happen to everybody, okay? I was spoiled. Um, although maybe if you start in 2021, you might make that too. That you'll actually probably learn the wrong lessons. I'd be more concerned if you make 50 or 100 grand with the wrong lessons, because then you hold. You're like, I don't care about rules. It doesn't matter. I was just thinking in my head. I I've seen traders from from being a student to now almost like the full circle teacher. I'll see students just starting and making money, and I'm almost worried because it 
if you lose right away, your expectations are set low, you're humbled and you immediately then know that you have work to put in. Whereas if you start making money very quickly, very fast, very soon, it's likely that you get aggressive much more quickly. You don't understand how to manage your risk. And so when the market turns, because it eventually does, and you eventually face that learning curve like everyone has faced, yeah. you then take losses at a level of aggression you're taking that you wouldn't have taken if you lost from the beginning. Correct. And some traders actually give up for that reason of like, this isn't working anymore. I'm losing more money than I ever thought. Now I'll read over, like give, they back, give back all their profits. Yeah. Versus if you started losing in the beginning, yeah. you're like, oh crap. And you actually start losing less, smaller, sooner. And this is another important point. This is tough to teach, but like, it's kind of like, you know, these, these child actors in Hollywood. Like if your first mm -hmm. film and it becomes like, you become a big hit, right? Like Drew Barrymore in E.T. Yeah, yeah. And she becomes like this big actress and she's like this little kid. She can't handle it. There's so many other young childhood stars, whether it's acting or music or whatever. They become a star so young, they never really grinded. They never really saw the other side. So then the, their expectations, everything's skewed. Macaulay Culkin, like they're yeah. all messed up for the rest of their lives when they have too much success early on. Versus if you have success year two, year three, year four, you already have the right expectations. You're more grateful. I hope that there are some students out there who trade small or paper trade. Don't even feel like you have to trade with real money. Paper trade, one year, two years, three years. By year five, maybe year 10, then you have all this experience, then you're so grateful for every little thing. It's not even just about the money, it's the gratitude. Like once you start making a hundred grand in a year on your own, like yes. that feels damn good. You don't need to be paid by BJ's. You don't yeah. need any, you know, employee slips. Like it's, it's eat what you kill in the market. And if you learn, and again, we don't win every time, but you earn more than you lose. There's a, there's a lot of gratitude that comes with oh, that. Oh, of course. Right? The, the year I quit working at BJ's, I made 90K that year. And I remember thinking How about- How much did you work at BJ's? How much did you make? Uh, like I worked part-time. I worked, well, the more and more I traded, the more and more I took trading seriously, the less and less I tried to work there solely because I want to study more, solely because I felt more comfortable making more money than I was already yeah. working there. Um, but I think on average, I was making anywhere between 10 to 15K. Okay. You know, working like- two or three days a week. Per year? Yeah, yeah per year. So like ramen noodles? Yeah, type. like I, I know I was living at home at the time because I could not afford to live on my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that happens. Yeah. And then 90K, were you ever trading at BJ's? On no, the job? No, I know, I know, nope. You I, never I traded never, at BJ's? I never worked. Did you go out to the parking lot to make a trade? I never worked at BJ's, I only worked at BJ's on the weekends. So. Oh! Friday night. I so, thought I was going to get you. Yeah. Luckily, crypto wasn't happening or you no. didn't know about crypto then. No. no that might have been dangerous. You might have made like 10 million trading crypto while working at BJ's <laughs> and then five years later, like you're all messed up because now you've made too much on crypto and like then your expectations are all <laughs> flawed. Thank God you didn't get into crypto that soon. I don't know. Perry Ye actually made a crypto guy back in, I want to say 2016, on Profitly. No one bought it. Like everyone's like, yeah, what is this? Like I remember seeing it and like didn't even like, yeah, what is that? Uh, and he was so dead on. That's yeah, what's so was. crazy. Now he's he putting was. us up, you know, taking us on his yacht in like Dubai. Yeah. It's yacht number one. Like yeah. it's crazy. Back then, crypto, the way that, you know, I didn't trade crypto. I still haven't. Only my imposters do. Don't trust anybody who tells you to open a shady crypto wallet. We have no other usernames. We don't manage anybody's money. I got to throw all that out there. But back then, crypto was interesting to me because um, you could have arbitrage of 25% savings at Starbucks or Amazon. So part of the guide, which was to me fascinating, if you just bought crypto and then you convert it into Starbucks gift cards, you save 25% off Starbucks. Oh, really? Because Starbucks wanted the early influencers. Uh, and Amazon Electronics, same thing. So if you, you bought a gift money. card using crypto with Amazon, and actually Starbucks and Amazon, I'm curious how much they got in crypto for people like Who buying over. stuff, right? Yeah. So they might have like these huge stocks of like crypto in the bank because people were like, oh, I'm saving 25% of my Amazon gift card. Now that Amazon gift card is worth like $5 million yeah. instead of like, I don't know. I don't know what happened with the whole gift card thing, but that was crypto early on. And to me, that was interesting. Yeah. So I'm not against crypto. I think that it has a lot of good um, you know, parts to it. But at the same time, there's a lot of shadiness, a lot of imposters. Today, Binance UK was just shut down. I don't know if you saw really? that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, before this, we saw this video, I checked the price of Bitcoin. It's up like a thousand or two. Yeah, it's at thirty-four thousand yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So it was at like thirty. So it's come up a little bit because when you shut down 
Binance in a big country and the thing still goes up, maybe all the bad news is priced in. Right. How much have you made in crypto now? Um, a lot of it's unrealized because I've been I'm more much more longer term. So I think the earliest I I actually got my 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 intention was grabbed by crypto during the 2017 run where Bitcoin went to like 20k. Yeah. And then from then on till now, I've been slowly investing more and more in certain specifically specifically Bitcoin. Um, but you don't manage anybody else's money. I don't. Yeah. If Those you, are if, just you think, if you think some of if you, if you think me is asking you to give you money, it's not me. I don't. I don't need your money, guys. I don't need your crypto. <laughs> I got enough of it. It's not going to be me. Um, but so I, I have invested in some of these crypto's long term. So unrealized, I'm up like one between one and two hundred grand on. Um, That's sick. Grand. Yeah. And Kyle has a new crypto course. If you click the link below, we're not going to get into crypto. That's a whole nother discussion. But I like that you're open minded into different assets that can go supernova. Anything yeah. that can go up, I put just $100,000 recently into Pokemon. It keeps going. Right now my 100,000 is like 120,000. That's cool. In like four months. I'm gonna donate it all. It's gonna be, go to a new school, the school that Pokemon built. Pokemon um, we cool. have a new Pokemon guide. Click the link below. Learn about these speculative assets. Stay open-minded. That's the whole point of this, right? Stay patient, stay open-minded, find what works best for you. Harry Ye did better with crypto. He could not trade a stock to save his life. But now he's made more than all my students and I combined with crypto. You find Amazing. what works, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. So congrats to you. Um, one final thought for everybody. Yeah. Mid 2021 right now, we've had a huge run up in crypto and penny stocks and Pokemon and all speculative assets, real estate now too. Yeah. What do you think people should do? If they're just beginning, let's say they, they're in the spot, how much did you start with? Uh, 6,000. They have 6,000, 5,000, 4,000, 3,000 in their name. What should they start to do? How do they get from 6,000 to nearly 2 million in five years? Oh, man. Um, or 10 years. Yeah. Not, I think, every, I not think everyone's the same. No matter what market you start in, there's definitely that fundamental basis of just getting started. Just learn. And then the reason why I've benefited from this market and was like the preparation meets opportunity is because I saw glimpses of markets like this earlier. It may not have been as insane, but we see, we've seen plenty of sector momentums like with the weed ship or weed stocks, the shipping stocks, low floats happen like once or twice a year. Those are like little glimpses. And then from pretty much December to like March, we had all that like all the time. It was like a whole blowout, you know, bonanza. Um, so I think learning, just getting started right now and picking up those nuggets, picking up that experience over time no matter what market we're in is always going to benefit you long term because like we go in cycles. There's never like one thing happens and we never see that kind of thing again. You know, there might, it might be different. It might adapt and evolve, but there's, there's common similarities that come up every, because it's the same people trading, right? It's the same guy at home working nine to five who found got an extra bonus in the year. So he's going to start trading again or the stimulus checks, like the same people and the same human psychology is constantly, you know, cycling in and out of the market. Yeah. So it's, it's just getting started, getting that experience under your belt so that when it comes again, you've seen it before and you're ready to roll. That's it. No, I love it. And watch this video a few times. Listen to what he has to say. There's a lot of subtle lessons here. I love the, the fact where you said like year one, you worked on this, year two, you worked on this, year three, year four. I mean, mm -hmm. you were in the right place at the right time, like year five, yeah. by far, yeah. right? Like, thank God you had four years of experience. What if you only right. had one year of experience, you wouldn't have capitalized yeah. as much. Yeah, and that just full, full circle what I've just been saying is like, you're right. what if I didn't start five years ago? So if you're watching this, you're like, should I start now? Yes. What in five years ago, this happens again. And you you would full circle again. It yeah. would just come around and you'd be ready. What if, it, what if all this mania happens in three years? Like right. you need to start preparing yesterday for what's going to happen two, three, five years from now. Because we don't know when the next big supernova is going to be. It could right. be next week. It could be next month. We have no idea. All you can do is control your preparation. You can't control the market, but you can control how prepared you're going to be. And sadly, most people watching this were unprepared for this latest round. You're probably going to be unprepared for the next round too. And that's why we teach. This is why, you know, breakouts and breakdowns is amazing. That's why your crypto guide is amazing. Click all the links below. Study up. Start learning. It's not about how much money you can make right now. It's how prepared can you be two years, three years, five years from now. I'm excited to see what you can do next round, next mania. Take it easy until yeah. then. Chill. Do like less sit-ups, you know, <laughs> enjoy yourself a little bit. I don't know, yeah. you know, but freaking awesome, man. Seriously, Thank you. Thank you. get inspired. Thank Kyle in the comments for all of his help 
for all of his wisdom. He doesn't have to share any of this. A lot of people will make a lot of money. They're just like, screw everybody else. I'm not going to help anybody. But Kyle actually likes helping other people. And now, you know, he, I anoint him the new Tim Grittani, right? So that's it. It's all a question of who's next. How bad do you want it? Are you willing to keep an open mind? Send this to somebody. Help somebody else get interested. The upside is possible. Remember, most traders lose, so it's not guaranteed. It's not even probable, but it's up to you. How prepared will you be? How much will you study? How bad do you want success? That's it. Have a good day. Later, guys.